All right, so today we're going to try and install the uh, Sumo Springs from Super Springs. I've seen a lot of videos on this that actually helps the uh, stability of the fifth wheel. So um, I'm going to give it a shot today. I know you, there's probably a lot of videos that you can watch that uh, do the installation. goes pretty smooth because of the editing process, I'm sure. But, but uh, it's not the way it works with me. It doesn't always go so smooth, so you may see that... Uh, it's going to be a little trickier than we thought. So uh, I've seen a couple of videos. Um, it should work on these axles. Either These are the Dexter 7,000 pound axles. So um, let's hope that Super Springs and Sumo Springs got it right. Here we go. So, uh, so I worked in partnership with uh, with Super Springs International to uh, to get these. But what I mean by partnership is that I gave them my credit card, and then they sent these. So this is a no uh, no way a paid promotion at all. But Super Springs, if you're listening, I'm open to suggestions. So uh, I'll just kind of I'll just kind of wait here and see what uh, see what you think. So I've seen that it's actually pretty pretty easy. Um, all it takes is a 9 uh, socket to get on the back inside of the bolt. Um, but, um, you know, easy is not necessarily <laughs> uh, how things always work uh, on this channel. So uh, let's see what we got here. So we've got instructions. Uh, of course, you've got the uh, gratuitous uh, advertisement for them, not for us. We'll check it out if they actually work, and maybe I'll put them on the side of the RV. Got your mounting plates. This is again, this is kit one. So I think they do give you a kit to move um, uh, any brake lines or any uh, propane lines away if they are in the way. I've kind of looked at it. It looks like we may have one brake line that may be an issue. We do have disc brakes, so we'll see how that goes. But yeah, that's uh, the mounting kit. And uh, this is the, uh, that's one of the springs. So this is actually the TSS 10747. That's the actual part number. This is for the overspring uh, 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 option of this. And so those don't look like they're very, very tall. So we may have to put some spacers in. I think those are in here. They do have spacers in case that uh, it, it doesn't reach the frame. So it uh, looks pretty tight based on what we see, but I guess we'll see what we come up with. The preparation was very easy. Just measured the distance between the top of the axle and the frame, put them together with the right clamps in the right position, and then look to see if you need to rehome any of the hydraulics, any of the brake lines, or any of the propane lines. So once you have them assembled, go to the bottom of the RV and mount them on top of the axles. Guesstimate to make sure that when the frame is dropped that it makes contact with the sumo springs and then tighten down. All right, I had to uh, had to move the brake line here. It was actually really tilted over that way, angled over, so I had to kind of loosen it up and move it over a little bit to get us get some clearance here. So it looks like it's going to fit. I thought I was going to have to cut some of this, uh, you know, this filler um, stuff that kind of gets bigger, but I think I'm going to be okay. I might cut a little piece off of that. So that's this is the rear axle. Um, on the passenger side so that looks like that what's going to work i'm a little worried about the ones on the other side because we do have some hydraulic lines i think to the slide uh that i have to probably rehome a little bit so uh, i'm going to just kind of fit these on there to make sure these these are all going to work before i actually tighten them down and loctite them 
but uh, so far so good. I did have to, I used the hydraulic jacks to jack it up a little bit to get some clearance, so you probably hear some creaking. Just hope the RV isn't moving. So you can probably see this line here. I'm gonna have to probably rehome this because um, it looks like it's just a little bit too close. It is mounted on the chassis. They've got a little uh, wrap there. So if I could rehome that to uh, the underbelly, uh, kind of over here, that might be a little bit different. Sorry for my voice, when I'm kind of laying backwards like this, <laughs> it's a little, a little harder to talk. So let's go grab another one and see what that so looks I'm like. I'm taking this off of here. And I'm taking one of these screws out, uh, these bolts, and I'm going <clears> to <throat> rehome it over here, but I'll have to do the same thing over that way as well. So it uh, shouldn't be too bad, but um, just want to kind of get it so it's away from this where the spring would be. Uh, I'm a little concerned about it over here. Over here, and I may have to do the same thing over there. So let's see what happens with the first one. All right, one thing to be cognizant of if you are going to install these is that uh, it does matter which one of these brackets you put on top. Um, these they are they have part numbers inscribed um, or imprinted into them, and there's one that's a I think five two one five one. That's always going to be the top plate, and then five two one five two is going to be your bottom plate. If you kind of look at it this way, so one five one one five two. Um, it does mention that in the. Uh, instructions and if you just take them out of the box and try and do it it looks like they'll line up but it talks about it actually not uh, maybe voiding the warranty if you don't do that right so just be cognizant if you get these and uh, pay attention I'm not the best at actually reading through instructions especially something that looks so simple but uh, definitely pay attention to that okay what I'm going to try and do now is I'm going to try and get all these on here and just make sure that we've got good clearances um, that uh, everything is sort of out of the way and then we'll uh, we'll take them off, you know, put the little bit of a Loctite on that we need to. And uh, I'm not even really sure you need it, to be honest, because uh, the weight of their RV is going to be sitting down on this. But maybe for these cross bolts, you probably need that. They are nylon lock nuts, but maybe just to be a little bit safer. So um, anyway, let's get these all four on first. Make sure that they are, uh, we have the clearance that we need. And uh, yeah, then we'll take them off and then we'll just tighten them down. No matter what you do, it's always one. So um, I'll need to get the uh, my hydraulic jack out to do this one. I don't want to jack up the uh, the trailer any more than it is. And unfortunately, the hydraulic jack is in the back of the truck, and Pam's got the truck. So we'll have to come back and do that one. So I think we'll get these three on, and we'll have to come back and do this one because I don't think I can get this one on at this point. So uh, yeah, that's uh, that's interesting. I guess it just didn't jack up enough on that side to get the clearance that we need. Oh well. Nothing ever goes easy with the Roadsmiths projects, that's for sure. All right, so you twist these on it's kind of as tight as you can, can with your hands. <sighs> kind of just like that. And then we tighten these down to about 10 foot-pounds of torque, which is not much. I mean, it's enough, obviously, past hand tight, but... Center here, which uh, this guy moved a little bit. I think it's good now. That's good. Like I said, we'll have to uh, have to jack up. Oh, here I am. Have to jack up the uh, 
this other side um, with the manual jack to kind of get that suspension or to release a little bit so it's just not just not up uh, high enough and I don't want to run the jack because we're kind of seeing uh, straightening of this particular uh, shackle right here and you never want that shackle to go the other way because you'll never get it back so uh, so let's let's bring her down and let's see what we got for the least the three and then we'll come back and do the fourth one Okay, so uh, we just got these, we got the three of them on, like I said, but I um, had to go back and readjust this one because it really wasn't centered. So look at that. I want to make sure that the actual cushion itself is centered onto the beam, and so that was a little bit off, so I loosened them up, jacked it back up, and uh, yeah, that looks good. Like I said, we'll have to wait to get the uh, hydraulic jack, the hand hydraulic jack to jack up the uh, front left side of the uh, of the RV so we can get that particular one done. It's just, uh, I don't want to risk jacking up with the, the trailer hydraulic jacks just for the uh, sake of maybe losing a, um, you know, a uh, shackle um, hanger. So, uh, not a hanger, but the actual, you know, the suspension itself. So the uh, Moride CRE 3000, I guess it's called. So we'll do that. We'll finish that piece up. We're not moving for another week. So we have some time to get that done before we hit the road again. So thanks for watching. And we'll do a, uh, we'll give you a kind of a, an inside view as we move along the road with it. We didn't do it before. So um, that's not going to be as much, but you can see plenty of those on, uh, on YouTube. And then uh, we think this is going to make a difference in terms of stuff shaking, rattling, and rolling uh, inside the RV. So thanks for watching. And uh, we'll finish up with the, uh, with the final fourth. Um, spring when we get that get the tools required thanks again all right I was able to get the fourth one done I had to uh, I couldn't use my hand jack because it actually wouldn't reach the frame so I had to jack up this side this jack right over here with some platforms uh, those Campco or uh, whatever they call them the, those yellow platforms kind of get that up so I can get it up high enough so but I did get that one on torqued them down at 10 foot pounds of torque and uh, yeah so looks like they're all sitting about middle that's good um, of course I don't have the before riding inside I'll do an after uh, but you can see on other videos where they've done the before and after and it does make a big difference so I'm hoping this uh, keeps things more on the wall <laughs> we've been pretty good about some stuff but some stuff has has fallen off like a clock and a couple other things so anyway that's the sumo springs installation and uh, yeah, not not terribly hard, not terribly easy. And you do have to improvise a little bit based on your particular uh, RV, um, and uh, you know just getting the, the enough clearance to get the springs underneath. So let's see how the interior rides. So the question is, was it all worth it? And I'd have to say a resounding yes. We've driven about 550 miles since we installed them in Golden, Colorado. We're now outside of Bryce Canyon, Utah, and had to come across, you know, 70, uh, across the Loveland Pass, and then even yesterday came down a road in Utah for about five or six miles. That was really, really, really bumpy. In the past, uh, when we showed up at a campsite, uh, our cabinet that has our glassware, mostly plastic, when you opened it up, it looked like bowling pins. They were just spread every place. We have some trays in the refrigerator that would uh, tend to move out a little bit. So as you uh, open the door, you had to be very, very careful. And most significantly, we had a, a clock that was above our pantry, and it had fallen twice before, subsequently broken. We've replaced it. Uh, and since we've replaced it, again, haven't really had an issue with that. It stayed on the wall with command strips just fine. So I would definitely say yes. Do your research. Make sure it's within your budget. Make sure it's something you feel like you're capable of doing. I would say that, you know, for the money, it does give a, a good bit of stability uh, back to the RV. Wanted to do a special shout out to Wayward Wags channel, Dustin and Leslie. 
he did a video on this uh, just, I don't know, about six weeks ago or so, which showed uh, him installing these, and that gave me the encouragement to, to get that done. I'd seen plenty of videos before, but since uh, Dustin and Leslie have an alliance, as do we, uh, it gave me more you know, encouragement and confidence that we can get this done on ours. So, so definitely appreciate that. Speaking of channels, if you like our channel and you like our content, we would love for you to subscribe and join us on our journey. Give us a like and then hit that bell to be notified of new videos coming up. We've got some great stuff coming up uh, from Montana still. And then we've spent uh, some time in Utah and it's just spectacular here. So we definitely want to bring that to you. And last but not least, um, you know, Super Springs International, Sumo Springs. If you're still listening, I'm still open to suggestions. Phone lines are open, so we'd love to hear from you. Anyway, thanks for watching again. Look forward to catching you down the road.